Hi everyone. Hi, welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hanzai channel. My name's Gabby. And I'm Charlotte. And today we're talking about transmission, specifically the dual clutch transmission. Now it's something that's increasingly popular in a lot of our Kia and Hyundai models, starting with the Sorento. The Kona. The Santa Fe. The Santa Cruz. <laughs> the Forte GT. <laughs> the Elantra. So it's in a lot of our vehicles. A lot of people, this might be a new technology for them. You might be someone who's into performance cars and you've heard about them for years. We're going to kind of touch base on What's the entry to them? Like, how, how do they work? Why do they work? And what are the benefits? So, Charlotte. So, Gabby. <laughs> Big question for you. Yeah. What is a dual clutch transmission? So, a dual clutch transmission is an automated manual transmission. It's very, very similar. So, you actually have two clutches, like the name suggests, but the clutches are computerized, so they change gears on their own. Now, in one clutch, you're going to have your odd gears, your gear one, gear three, gear five, grade you're all the way up to seven on some of our models. On the second clutch, you'll have your even gears, your two, your four, your six, your eight. Um, our highest gear shift is um, the eight speed wet type dual clutch transmission. So we have seven or eight as of now. Um, so your gears will cycle in between those. And as soon as you're, let's say you're in gear one, your gear two is already ready. So it's a millisecond shift. It is quick, it is efficient. It saves on power loss. It is a very, very efficient way to change gears. So how does it all work? So it works based off the computer programming. So your car is always going to be ready to program into your next year, next gear, sorry. <laughs> um, another way you can do it is you do have the option to manually select your gears. So with that, you can use your paddle shifters. So here we have it based off of one of our Kia steering wheels. Um, they're just right behind the wheel. Not every dual clutch car is equipped with them there. So we're actually going to show you another vehicle as well too. But you have your downshift on the left and your upshift on the right. That way you can um, change them yourself. And if you want to exit out of manually shifting, you kind of just hold your paddle in and it'll go back to regular automatic mode on your dual clutch transmission. Another thing I want to point out is, as the name suggests, it's a dual clutch, but there's no actual clutch pedal. So you do not have to drive with the clutch. You don't have to use your other foot. You can still do one foot driving. Your regular brake, your regular gas is not going to be in third pedal there. And there's no shift knob. So you're just going to have your regular gear shift, your park, your reverse, your neutral, your drive. So less stress there. Um, what other questions do you have for me, Charlotte? So how does it differ from just a regular automatic transmission? So it's going to feel a little bit more sporty. It's going to be a little bit more of a quick shift. Um, depending on what kind of car you're buying, if you're buying a Sorento, it's not going to feel like a sports car, but it does have the quicker shifts and you will feel it. I've spoken on a lot of our Sorento videos about how much fun it is to drive. But if you're looking at something like an N vehicle or a Kia K5 GT, then it's going to be a bit more of a sporty transmission and you're really going to feel it change gears. Um, now, the way it works compared to an automatic is it doesn't have a torque converter. So everything is in the clutch itself and it's ready to go. <laughs> so it's, it's a very technical. I know this might be a lot, but essentially it handles and drives like a regular automatic transmission. There isn't any actual shifting that you have to do yourself. So no stress there. So moving out of some of the technical elements, what are the actual pros of having a dual clutch transmission and then where, where are the cons? Okay, the cons. <laughs> so for pros, you're definitely getting a little bit more efficiency. I like to say it's a bit more of a spirited drive. So if you're a car enthusiast or driving enthusiast, it might feel a little bit more like a car, like you're in tune with the vehicle. A lot of people are team manual till they die, but manual transmissions are slowly fizzling out. Not even slowly, they're fizzling out. So it's very hard to find a newer manual transmission yeah. car. This is the closest option. Performance is fantastic. So a lot of uh, sports cars, mainly Porsche, they popularized it in um, the 1980s. So with their PDK transmission, the shifts are so quick. It's so sporty. You get amazing efficiency as well, too, in a regular vehicle. So it's the best of both worlds. Now with cons, some people do not like the abrupt shifts. Mm -hmm. Some people, they may not like how sporty it feels. They may not understand it. It is a little bit more expensive to fix as well if anything were to go wrong. Um, but other than that, they are pretty reliable as long as you take care of them. There is a little bit of um, special care related to a dual clutch transmission. And one thing is when you're idling, um, you do not have to have it in neutral. So that doesn't really make sense because as long as your, um, your foot's on the brake, your clutches aren't disengaged. So you do not have to put it in neutral and kind of take your foot off. You're fine there. Um, another thing is if you're on an uphill, you want to make sure you're fully holding your brake. You do not want to let your foot off the brake or kind of fizzle it out, slowly release, because that's going to put wear on your clutch itself. All the holding is going to be done with the transmission. 
So for it to fully disengage, like I said, you have to have your foot on the brake. Another thing, if you're in stop and go traffic a lot, you do not want to allow your car to just creep and idle with your foot on the brake. Um, you want to be fully holding the brake down. I can't stress that enough. You don't want to feather the brake or slowly release. You just want to um, wait until a gap gets bigger, hit the gas, and let your car cycle, or else it's kind of going to be in the transition between being engaged and not being engaged or on its way to first gear. So you want it to be disengaged. So right. <laughs> I think we should take a look at what we can see on the uh, 23 Kona end line. So we actually have a car inside that has a dual clutch transmission. And when I show you the gear shift, you're going to say, Gabby, that is an automatic car. It is an automatic car. It's a dual clutch. So there's no actual manual shifting. But I'll show you how you can choose to manually change your gears. First, I'll show you the pedals. You'll see there's only two. So gas and brake, no clutch pedal. I'm gonna start this car real quick. Don't worry, we're not gassing anybody out. This is your gear shift. So this is a Kona end line. I'll put it into drive, tip it over to the left, and then I can increase, if you look at the dash there, or change gears, and then drop it down. Because we're not actually moving, I can't actually change my gears. But that's how you would do it. So up shift, down shift with your gear shift, and then if you wanna remove it from manual mode, it's that easy. So left, right, there you go. And that is all for our video today. I hope you learned something about dual clutch transmissions. I'm sorry about the beeping. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, we aren't mechanics, but we try our best to know our stuff. And uh, let us know if you want to see any other transmission videos.